Hi guys, um, we have Marco here today from Ecospave, one of the largest um, energy saving solution company in Australia and New Zealand. How are you today, Marco? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm pretty good. Uh, we are still under a lockdown and getting adapted to the current situation. So how is uh, your company doing in these difficult times right now? Uh, not too badly, but we're doing fairly well. I mean, um, we're actually looking to grow our team. Um, just had a couple of interviews today to actually uh, bring more resources onto the team. So, I mean, we're doing uh, okay. I mean, um, our company's been pretty fortunate that we've actually we're set up to work remotely um, from, the, from the get-go because all employees have, you know, laptops and mobile phones. Uh, so the transition to working from home was actually very, very easy. Uh, from a technical point of view, because uh, we had the systems in place, uh, but it took a little bit of time for us to get used to the, you know, doing meetings online, not you know face to face anymore. Um, just little things like that, but overall, you know, things are going pretty well. Wow, that's yeah. uh, fascinating because this is the first time I'm hearing a company actually recruiting in the, these difficult times. So, are you? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, so we're looking specifically to um, grow our marketing um, uh, marketing team. Uh, so I come from marketing background and I'm uh, kind of the associate director for lead generation. Yeah, that's my role. Um, and it's a lot that we want to do and can do, uh, but we just need um, kind of more resources and skills to do that. So, yeah, so looking to grow the team. Wow. So mm -hmm. how are you recruiting people right now? So conducting inter interviews virtually and stuff, is it? We are. So um, our strategy is at this point in time is to uh, get resources in, uh, in the Philippines, based in the Philippines. Uh, so the meetings are, have been, we'll be doing uh, virtually. Uh, but a lot of our because we have offices in Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane, a lot of the interactions between our team and staff are done virtually anyway. So there's not much difference um, between you know, people, whether you work from home or in the office. Uh, the meetings we have with staff, whether they're based in the Philippines or, or in, the, in a different city, in a different state, um, we tend to work online. So it's just a new norm these days. That's right. So you also have offices in New Zealand? Uh, so we've got a virtual presence there. We, we tr tried um, tapping into that market, but uh, I guess the, it's, a, it's a much smaller country, uh, much smaller population, not much. The key drivers for, I guess, what um, we do as a company, it's not, not, not much of a big, as big of a market as in Australia. There's a lot more opportunities in Australia. Uh, and uh, so our focus is on that uh, in Australia for the time being. But uh, we have service clients in the past, uh, then we've had a few representatives, you know, uh, sales representatives helping us out over the, over the years. But um, yeah, we've uh, when the time and you know when the opportunity arises, we can definitely uh, provide some support to Australian and uh, New Zealand customers. Gotcha. So, uh, how many employees do you have in your company? So right now we've got um, between. Uh, 45 to 50 um, employees. Uh, majority of them are full time. Uh, some of them are based uh, offshore, uh, but we're looking to grow more, uh, add more people to the team uh, with offshore resources. Most of our resources are mainly um, uh, engineering staff or people from engineering backgrounds, because uh, what we do as a company is like engineering based solutions. Um, there's different disciplines, of course, but um, yeah, mostly uh, people from engineering backgrounds that we that we uh, have on have on team. Gotcha. So you also have large employees in different cities. Is it difficult to manage uh, all of them in these times, or they all have a task assigned and they go on about it? Yes, I mean <clears throat> we've got uh, I guess clear kind of business um, units. Uh, so we've got five business units, um, each kind of representing different uh, types of services that we provide and solutions to, to customers. So we've got Ecosave Advisory, which is um, about uh, providing uh, energy audits and uh, 
energy consultancy and sustainability services. Um, and then we've got Eco7 Efficiency, which is broken up into three different um, regional teams. Um, so basically those, those form the basis of our operations. Uh, so operations team in terms of implementing energy efficiency projects. So they go in and, and assess the uh, assess the sites, um, develop engineering solutions and for energy efficiency. Uh, so that's based in different um, uh, teams per state or per, per main, major region. Um, and then we have uh, Ecosave Automation, which is um, a team dedicated around um, providing building controls and building control strategies uh, to provide optimal automation uh, within uh, built environments. Uh, Ecosave Maintenance and Service, which is um, providing post-sale implementation services, um, such as uh, you know, maintenance, uh, maintaining any assets that we've installed, um, you know, replacing life, replacing life fittings, repairing them, uh, kind of general maintenance and service. Um, and then uh, Ecosave Watch, which is our energy monitoring or energy management uh, solution. So it's um, a combination of software as a service. Uh, so we've got software in the cloud and also uh, dedicated team to provide um, kind of clients with the ability to to track uh, energy energy usage and with uh, custom built portals uh, for the clients to look at uh, the trends, the data, and anything related to uh, the energy consumption. So uh, it's an end-to-end -end, uh, solution for the for the client um, from conception to completion, um, and it's every part of the journey that we're trying to. Uh, provide and solve every piece of the puzzle. Got it. Wow, it sounds like a huge portfolio you guys have out there. And um, uh, one question I wanted to ask is, do you only uh, provide solutions to uh, independent organizations or even governments? So we service um, uh, mostly government clients, uh, but we do, we do um, help and we actually keen to grow in the space of uh, assisting uh, businesses. Um, specifically businesses in the education sector, in the healthcare sector, uh, uh, manufacturing and commercial real estate. So uh, there's a, many, many opportunities. Um, there's numerous opportunities because if you think about every uh, large commercial building that's you know in Australia, you know last time I checked, there's uh, many thousands of buildings that uh, have opportunities to improve uh, the sustainability profile um, and different uh, companies or, or company or building owners have different drivers for why they would want to be interested in energy efficiency. Some are interested in reducing their energy costs. Um, some are interested in improving the rating of their buildings. So the government has a neighbor's rating, uh, which basically every large building has to um, be rated on a uh, seven star scale. Uh, so, you know, if the more stars you have, the, the more energy efficient the building is, then you'll be able to attract uh, better quality tenants. Uh, certain tenants are only interested in uh, higher rating buildings because it means that the energy bills will be cheaper for them. Um, so, there's various kind of factors and drivers, but um, in terms of people who service, uh, definitely governments and, and um, um, businesses of all types, really. Uh, one question that I wanted to ask you personally is Sydney, whenever I've been to Sydney, it's a very busy city. Now, how is it during these uh, times and during this lockdown? Is it calm and quiet or it's always busy? It's an interesting question because um, I think within the first two weeks um, when the government initiated the um, kind of quasi-lockdown, um, they kind of put recommend recommended things that we needed to do. So it wasn't, um, you know, and they're trying to, in a sense, uh, force people to stay at home, but they didn't put it in those terms. But uh, in terms of, I think at one point, 80% of usual traffic was down, um, or usual traffic was down by 80% at some point. But uh, over the last couple of weeks, things have seemed to ease a bit and we'll get more confident. I've noticed when I go out for a walk, is the government, up until this point, they've allowed us to do one form of exercise um, per day. 
uh, and we still allowed to go to the shops and things like that. But we've got strict social distancing rules. Yeah. Um, you know, keeping 1.5 meters apart. Um, but lately, I've noticed people have been venturing out to step a little bit more confident. And I think because specifically in Australia, um, we've got compared to other countries, we've got an extremely low number of uh, cases uh, per That's right. thousands of testing. Um, I think overnight there were six six um, positive cases, um, which is very low compared right. to you know the UK, US, where they have thousands overnight. You know, so. Uh, we're in a fortunate situation where we can isolate ourselves in terms of um, uh, a geography perspective. Um, you know, we just kind of shut the airports and basically, because most of the infections came from overseas travelers. Uh, so once we actually locked them down uh, and forced them into quarantine for two weeks, we noticed that the, the number of um, you know, cases went down quite, quite considerably. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Think they're improving, and government's talking about uh, actually opening up the economy again. So um, I hope uh, things get back to normal pretty soon. And uh, so at this time, you know, a lot of business is going out of um, uh, operations, and unemployment mm. reach uh, and unemployment numbers have reached an all-time high in many of the countries. But somehow, your company or your managers, you guys, have found a way to you know keep pushing it forward and scale your business further. So what would be the one big advice that you would give to uh, fellow organizations like yours? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting question. It's a good question. Um, it, it really just depends on the industry because some uh, industries and the nature of what you do as a business, sometimes it, it affects more than others. Um, so I guess we're just in a fortunate position that a lot of our clients still are looking for the type of services we're offering. Um, you know, I mean, there's been some impact. You know, it's not like it's been all rosy, but it's uh, not as bad as you know, other you know, industries where they've literally been shut down. Because, like, for example, the hospitality industry, um, right. it's virtually shut down overnight. You know, no, no, no pubs, no cafes, no cinemas, no nothing. You know, um, so it's really hard to give any kind of advice and business in those situations because they had no choice really. Um, but I guess we've been pretty fortunate as a country. Um, government has, has been, um, I guess, proactive in terms of providing um, billions and billions of dollars of support. Um, so I guess gen generally, uh, if I were to give some advice um, is, you know, Businesses just need to take advantage of those programs. Um, uh, the job keeper and job seeker, um, you know, those big programs that have been rolled out, and um, hopefully it won't last for too long. Uh, hopefully things can turn to normal, and you know, people can stand on its own two feet, two feet again. But um, yeah, just make the most of the, the grants and rebates and um, different. Different things available, and I think specifically in relation to what we do as a company you know, in terms of energy efficiency, uh, the government's still offering grants uh, to government to businesses, um, basically, you know, providing them thousands of dollars in in, um, in funded uh, energy efficiency upgrades. Um, so there's still opportunities for businesses who are um, still going in the situation. Or looking to reopen as restrictions ease, there's a lot of um, kind of incentives out there, you know, tax write-offs, um, um, uh, tax write-offs, and also um, different various grants and programs that the government's got out there that uh, could help businesses reduce their costs, so they can have, you know, a smarter way of doing business, you know, more leaner, um, uh, become more efficient, you know, reduce their costs uh, in the long term. So. There's plenty of opportunities out there. Just make sure that you're taking advantage of it. That's all I can say. Perfect. And also one of the um, uh, key areas that I would think is getting all your clients, employees on cloud solutions immediately so that you can work remotely, manage them remotely um, using uh, various software. So I assume that you are using Zoho for most of your communications as well, right? Yeah, so... I mean, we've, we've got a kind of a mixed IT platform. So um, in terms of our 
kind of uh, I mean, we use Zoho for the CRM and the Zoho campaigns. Um, and we started to use that a, a, a lot more. Um, but uh, in terms of internally, what we use uh, within the company, uh, prior to uh, adopting Zoho, uh, which we've only had for the past, uh, I would say, month, 10 months, uh, or since July last year, which is how long that is. Um, uh, prior to that, we've, we've had Microsoft um, suite of products to Office 365. We've been using that platform in terms of, um, you know, communication internally, um, and you know, sometimes communicating with clients out, outside. Um, so in terms of hosting virtual meetings, you know, we've used Microsoft SharePoint and um, Microsoft Teams. So I guess because we've already invested in that um, prior to coming into Zoho, I'm um, aware that. So it has pretty much every other solution uh, or a, a comparable product or service, um, but it's just kind of we've already invested in that prior to that. So, yeah, so that's just how we are at the moment. All right, perfect. Thank you so much for um, joining us today here, Marco. It was a pleasure talking with you, and I hope we'll get to see each other pretty soon as well. Thanks so much, Kashi. Thank you very much. Thank you, and have a nice day, Marco. See you.